What's going on everybody? I'm Patrick from Powlax and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the spike, stick work, and passing drill. So this is a drill that I love to use pre-game as well as at the beginning of practices to make sure that the offensive players get a lot of reps of how they're actually going to have to move when they are swinging the ball around the field in our offensive sets prior to getting into our offense. Now, this drill can be run like I'm going to be showing you here and it can also be run a lot tighter where Basically, the entire drill could be just in this tiny portion of the field. But before we get into the drill, if you'd like to download the playbook PDF of this drill so you can print it out and add it to your playbook, you can get that by becoming a patron of Palax on Patreon by clicking this link up here in the corner. By becoming a patron, you help to support the creation of these lacrosse coaching videos that are free for any coaches to use on YouTube. Also, you get access to this and a ton of other playbook PDFs. So now let's get into the drill. First thing we gotta cover is our setup. And so I'm gonna show you a setup that that is a much larger setup that really gets players throwing longer passes that will be simulated in the game. You can also run this drill in a much smaller set that we'll show you in a bit. Marquette actually ran it in an Instagram post, so I'm going to show you that video as well. But so we're going to create four lines that are going to move outward from the middle of the field. It's a lot like the swing it drill, it's just now we've got four lines and each line is going to have two cones one in the middle, one on the outside, and this is going to be about 8 to 10 yards going out from each side. Each line will have three to four players, and I like to set it up in this plus pattern, but you can also use an X. It really just kind of depends on how you want to simulate for your player. So if you run a 2-2-2, two, 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 you'll probably run this X pattern. But one of the other things that I really like about this drill is that we can have our goalie warming up as the players are running this drill. And so another thing about it is we also like to have poles pregame who are in all four corners throwing long passes and so this stays out of their way and we're able to get our reps. The whole idea of this drill is that we are going to pop out, catch the ball, execute some kind of skill and then move the ball around the outside of the field and every time we have a new skill we're going to go one direction and then back so players will catch left throw right after a little while we'll switch it and we'll go catch right throw left so that they're getting reps of moving the ball both directions so to start the drill if you're going to run two balls which is what i'm going to show you the best way to do it is to make sure that this player and this player communicate that they are going to start the drill and to start the drill, what they're going to do is they are going to pop out with the ball and they're just kind of going to round their cone. And so they should be doing this at the exact same time. Now, as they do that, once they get to about around this cone, the players in the adjacent lines are going to pop out and they're going to accept a pass. Now, as they do this, we really, really want to focus on the timing that they are popping out. So as you get into the drill, what you'll find is that players will drop the ball and you'll have a player who just stands out here. Now we don't want to have that happen because we want to get players in the habit of popping to the sideline, catching the ball on the outside. We also want to make sure that the players who are passing the ball are passing it to the outside. They should lead them to the outside. And so once they catch the ball, they are then going to come around this cone doing whatever skill and the next player is going to pop out. They are going to pass the ball and every player, once they catch the ball, execute their skill and move the ball, they're all gonna get in the back of their own lines. So A1 would get in the back of this line, A5 once he caught it, rounded through to what would be A2, he is then gonna get in the back of his own line. So the drill is very simple, but as we start to integrate all of the skills, that's what's kind of going to bring this to life. So the first skill that I like to run is to turn outside. So as players are popping to the outside, let's say that I'm receiving a pass from you, I am going to make sure my stick is in my outside hand and that I accept the ball on the outside. Now, as I turn away, what I want to make sure I do is that I look up and inside first, then I'm going to switch hands by leaving the stick where it is and turning my body around. So I'm not gonna move my stick. What you'll see kids do is they're gonna catch the ball here and they're going to do this. And we don't want them to do that. We want them to keep it as far away from the defenseman as they can the entire time as they turn to the outside. Once we run that for about a minute, minute and a half, we're gonna reverse it and we'll go the other direction. So here you get to see our setup for the first time. We've got our four lines. The players are popping with their sticks to the outside, turning to the outside and then passing the ball. You also see that we've got our goalie being warmed up in the middle of our drill, which is definitely nice. 
And so right about now, you see that we're going to reverse it. Now we're going to go the other direction. And so now players are catching with their right hand, turning to the outside, switching to their left, and then passing with their left. The next skill that we're going to use is a simple split dodge where the players will be able to turn to the middle. And so as players are repping through this drill, every single time they catch the ball, they have to look inside. And I love this when I'm warming up goalies. Usually I'll stand inside and we'll actually have a player warm up the goalies. But I like to stand inside and make sure players are seeing me so that as they're in the game, once they accept the ball with whatever skill they're going to do, they're going to look inside to me to maybe a possible cutter in a game and then go through their skill and then move the ball. So as we get to our split, that's going to be very easy for them. So they're going to catch the ball with a stick on the outside. And as they split, we don't want them to just change hands and move the ball. We want them to accept the ball, kind of square up their defender, look inside, and then make an actual type of split dodge, some type of move. Now, one cool thing about this drill is if you like your players to split and then rocker or split and then double rollback, you can have them execute all of those skills as well. Here you see we're catching right, throwing left, executing a nice little split dodge. Now, now you'll notice certain players want to catch the ball. They'll split and they'll actually move their feet while others will kind of just catch the ball, turn, keep their feet set, or try to just fire the ball off. We really want to make sure that the players are moving their feet, catching, making an actual move, and then moving the ball. So once the players have executed their split dodges in both directions for about a minute and a half each, we're going to move on to catch and fire. And for catch and fire, I'd never have our players use their off hands because I want them to get, this is more of a shooting thing than it is a passing and swinging the ball thing, even though players can swing the ball using this. What we're really working on here is how players can accept the ball with soft hands in a loaded position and then fire off a shot. As players are in the catch and fire, they are going to be shooting the ball at about 80% speed at each other. So they're working on accepting really fast passes, catching it loaded, stepping in and firing a shot. So within our strong hand only, if I'm going to receive a ball right handed from this direction, coming from here, it's going to be very simple for me to accept the ball to my collarbone, step in and fire my shot across my body very very simple it's how players always seem to do it now if the ball is coming from the other direction it gets a little more difficult so whereas i might run away so i might run this way accept the ball hop step turn from that direction if it's coming from the other direction i'm actually going to back pedal so i'm going to watch the ball as it comes in i'm going to back pedal out and as he throws it he's going to throw it to the inside and i'm actually going to use the ball coming in to turn my body so as the ball comes in, I'm going to accept it here, hop, step, turn, fire away. And so what you'll find is that most players are going to either snap at it and they're going to give one, two, three cradles and they're going to move it. Or they're, that's basically what you're going to see most of the time is that they're just going to cradle a lot. But what we want to have them do is we want to have them really accept it lightly, get to their spot, fire it off. As far as the backpedaling out, catching it across our body, letting the momentum of the ball turn us, you're really going to see this a lot in man up sets. Let's say you push from X. Let's say we got a righty shooter here and we are pushing from X and we draw this slide and we move it up to him. He needs to catch the ball coming across his body and then move it or shoot it. But that is what we're simulating. We're not really simulating swinging the ball. I'd way rather have a player catch the ball with his outside hand like we emulated in the split and turn outside if we are just swinging the ball. Now in our catch and fire series, most of our players are right-handed and we're going to see accepting the ball on the right side first. Notice how the players are accepting the ball, keeping their stick quiet, and then firing off a 80% shot to the next player. Now we move to go in the other direction and you'll see more players, watch how they accept the ball on the inside, allow it to turn them, give a nice little hop step and then fire it off. Once we've done our catch and fires, now we're gonna go into our give and go and I really, really love this give and go set. So let's say we have M3 come up and around, he's starting his drill, A1's gonna do the same thing. Once they move the ball and A5 pops to the sideline, M3 passes him the ball right as M5 catches the ball, he's immediately going to turn and he's going to pass it into M7. A5 is going to come around this cone. M7 is going to pass it back to him. And now he's going to move it to the next player. 
I really, really love this one for getting a ton, just a ton, ton of touches. And as we're running this, every time we accept the ball, it's going to be catch it, one cradle, move it. Catch it, one cradle, move it. Catch it, one cradle, move it. And then we're going to cycle through in this manner. Now, if your players are competent and they can actually do this, you can actually make this a quick stick portion of the drill. A couple different ways that you can run these give and goes is one, you can have them accept the ball, pass it, cut, receive it, and then move it. Or you can have them accept the ball, move it, you know, kind of set up into their shot, accept the ball, and then move it. How you want to run it is up to you and to whatever you'd like to work on. But just the idea of catching the ball, looking inside, actually moving the ball inside, and then accepting the ball again has really helped a lot of our younger players understand the idea of accept the ball on the outside every time I'm looking inside, whether I'm turning away or if I am catching it and splitting. Regardless, anytime I catch the ball, I'm going to look inside, might have a cutter, might have someone open. We're not going to lose out on easy goal opportunities. Now in our give and go series, we were working on accepting the ball into our loaded position and then passing to the middle, then accepting it and kind of firing it to the next line. Then we move to the opposite direction where players are receiving it across their body and doing the exact same thing. I really like this one. I think it's really going to help us as we rep through our offense this season. Once we're done with giving goes, I always like to end with over the shoulder passes. And to run that, we're going to do lead me passing, which basically as the players are running, they're gonna say lead me. But we're going to have the players move their lines to the outside of the field, and this is your basic four-corner passing. But So as the players are playing, we are going to have them start running. The players will run away, and the players will be throwing the ball to a player who is running away. Then they will obviously catch the ball. Then this player will run. Once this player catches the ball, the next player will leave and he will then move it to the next player. And so one of the biggest and most important things for this lead me is that we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves. And so this player cannot leave until this player catches the ball. Once that rule is there, you're really gonna have players who are catching the ball, able to move the ball quickly because the players aren't getting too far spread out because they're going away from each other. Now, as players are accepting the ball, this is another one that I like to run with strong hand only because I think that as a player is running upfield away from someone, they're never gonna be using their off hand. They might use it if they're running back at somebody, but I really feel that players are so much more comfortable catching the ball as it comes over their shoulder with their strong hands that that's the one that we'll use most of all. And so the biggest key is that if a player is accepting the ball with his inside hand, he has to catch the ball like a wide receiver would over the shoulder here. We want them to lead with their sticks in front as they say lead me, and we wanna make sure that as they accept the ball here that they're pulling it into their cradling position and really that they are accepting it here, getting it to their collarbone, and immediately throwing that next pass. What you'll see a lot of players do is they try to snatch at the ball, and we really wanna get rid of that as quickly as possible. We really wanna make sure that as they accept it, they are giving, and then they are just getting back up into their passing motion. Now in our lead me series, players are running away, everyone is moving as the player before them catches the ball. And one of the things that I really love about all of these drills is that if a ball is dropped and the ball then re-enters at the same position, the players should not be told to stop and to move the balls apart from each other. They just need to communicate. Whichever player is receiving the ball from another player needs to call out that player's name or they actually have to work on their offensive communication as they are running the drill, not just stop it because, oh man, two balls are going to the same spot at once. So now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can also run this same type of drill in a much smaller confined space. So if you don't have the space or you just need to make sure it's smaller, you can absolutely run this in a very small pattern where the players are just kind of popping out a little bit to move the ball. They're not really moving super far. And so, if you run it like this, you can actually add in a lot of more advanced skills, skills that you're not gonna use to throw long passes. So a few of the skills that I really like to integrate into this smaller version that we'll see in a second as Marquette runs it are behind the backs, wind up, face dodge, around the world passes, lever passes, wind up, face dodge, shovel passes, anything where you really don't have to throw it that long of a distance so that players can get the feel of the movement before they may have to execute it at a long range. Now, 
Another big key about these is, let's say we are doing wind up face dot shovel passes. As this player catches the ball in his left hand with his stick to the outside and he face dodges, we don't want him to just stand there and go like this and then move the ball from here. As he face dodges, he needs to wind up like he's going to shoot. And then when he face dodges, he must move his feet and come in this direction before throwing the shovel pass from there. You'll find that a lot of players really like to just accept it, kind of come here, and then they just move it when they really need to accept the ball, really wind up, really face dodge, and actually move after the face dodge. Another huge thing about face dodges for all of the younger coaches is if you ever teach a player how to face dodge, they must protect the stick for at least three steps. Because if I'm gonna wind up and I'm gonna face dodge and go by somebody, it's gonna take me at least three steps to get by them. But you see a lot of players go like this. And so they face dodge and they bring it right back so they can get checked. Here we see Marquette running the smaller spike trail and right now they are in catch and split and where they are just catching and switching hands. Now they are transitioning to turn to the outside and they will run through all of the different skills that they want to get to. So the final thing I'm gonna show you in this video is one of the more advanced things that I actually haven't been able to pull off because it is a bit confusing and it does take a lot of practice. I think we could get there, but we'll kind of see if we do. I really want to find a group that can do this and we'll see if it can happen. But so basically we're going to pop out and each player is going to move the ball. So let's say the top and bottom lines have the balls. And so he's going to move the ball here. This player is going to move the ball here. Now these two players are going to throw over passes to each other. So at the same time, they're going to have to look at each other. They're going to have to wind up. They're going to have to throw a ball and catch a ball in the same set. And then they're going to move it to the next player. Once they move it to the next player, these two are going to throw the balls to each other. Now, I'd love to make this kind of a competition. You could easily do it with the players just standing on the outside. And that's actually what we have a little video of. But I'd love to get it where the whole motion was moving, players are popping out, they're moving the ball, and everything had to be succinct and timed because it would really incorporate a lot more awareness as to where the balls were, was a ball dropped, how are we getting back into the set, that will kind of make the players work a little more, and it would just be really sweet to see this done really quickly, like and just, just repped out at, at a fast pace for a good amount of time. In this example, the four of us are just standing there making the passes, and this is definitely a lot easier than it would be to rep it within the spike drill, having players pop in and out. But I definitely think you could work up to that, and I think it really does help the players work on their awareness on being able to get rid of the ball and then be ready to receive it quickly. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Definitely let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section. If you'd like to download the playbook PDF for this and a bunch of other stuff, you can get that at patreon.com slash Palax by clicking this link up here in the corner and becoming a patron. Make sure to follow Palax and Palax Master Coach on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to sign up with the mailing list, you can head to the palax.com coaches resources section where a lot of the videos are displayed in a much better way than YouTube can show them. Have a good one. I will see you guys in the next video.